This is a quick video we've been asked to do by a couple of customers for um, rebuilding the head on a 14 inch Whirlaway. Now this is a new 14 inch Whirlaway and this is a modification we're performing now to all of them as they come in and before they go out to the customers just to improve the um, usability and the circulation of the grease inside the head when you're obviously greasing them before use. Now if you open the, open the bag you need a 14mm spanner and a 5mm hex key and you, the first thing you want to do is move the rotor arm. And you've got three Allen headed bolts to pop out. And that fourth one there that you can see, that small hole, is your telltale hole or the bypass hole. So if the seals fail in the head unit, um, you'll get water coming out of this and obviously the head unit won't spin properly. Now you've taken that off, we've split that down. So now we will get a pair of circlip pliers and we'll pop those into there. Remove the main circlip and that should mean that we can just remove the internals. Now down the bottom there you'll see something familiar from the other sizes which is the inlet kit which is essentially um, what I call a top hat because it looks like a top hat with a ceramic seal on it and the ceramic seal comes into contact with the ceramic seal on the shaft forms a watertight seal and rotates. Now the next part is going to be um, taking this to pieces and pressing off and resealing the unit. Right now if we take the shaft that we've removed from the bearing covers and we have a look inside the bearing housing see where the shaft will sit we can see a little hole on this side and a little hole on this side this one is the bypass so if the seal fails and for whatever reason the water doesn't pass between that ceramic and that ceramic face the water will obviously escape out the side when it does escape out the side, it'll go down through that hole and out the telltale hole, which I showed you earlier. That's, as I say, how you indicate that the seals have failed, or the, well, the ceramic seal has failed, or the o-ring on the top of the inlet kit, obviously. Then you've got the washer here, or this brass, with an o-ring on either side of it. This has basically two purposes. The first of which, to stop the water going down through the bearings if the water seal does fail and to stop the grease which comes in from this point going up and packing the top of the casing so these o-rings here have basically two purposes um, you've got a recess here for the grease to pack, sit in as you pack the grease into the unit which obviously comes in through the second hole now obviously as you look at this where does the grease get into the centre of the bearing housings, into the bearing casings? There's no opening for it to pass through, there's no space here, you know, I can't even get my fingernail in. So what we're going to do is remove the shielding, the rubber shielding from the bearings um, to allow the grease to pass basically through the centre of the top bearing and into the second bearing here. We'll leave the bottom shield on because this obviously stops your sand grit passing up from the bottom of the unit and into the casing. Um, so what we're going to do first is quickly remove the circlip from the top of the shaft which sits in that little groove there and now we're just going to go and press these off in the hydraulic press um, and I'll be back in a moment. Now once we've pressed that off obviously we've got the stub shaft and the two bearings with both shields on. So, you know, you can grease these, but the grease isn't actually going to get into the bearings, which is obviously fairly pointless. Um, and as you've no doubt seen from the, how clean my hands are, there wasn't a great deal of grease in this from the factory. So it's fairly essential that we do this to all the new units to make sure they're going to operate properly. Now, the easiest way of doing this is to push a flat bladed screwdriver, a small one, just into the side of the bearing casing and flip out the shields. Obviously you have to be careful that you don't stick this 
through the metal shields into the races and jam them up. So obviously damaging those is going to prevent them from rotating properly. So we just do that to both of these. If I can hold the screwdriver straight, be a great improvement. There we go. Pop that out and throw those away. Now, obviously, when we reassemble this, we want the bottom shield intact. So that one's going to go face down. Then we just pop this one back over the top and we'll go and press these on. Now we've pressed the bearings on, you should have something that looks like this. Um, you can't press them on too far, obviously because there's a, a groove in the base of the shaft to stop the bearings moving any further. Um, I've pre-greased them, so I pop some, uh, just some lithium grease around the outside to keep them lubricated before we put the grease in from the top of the head and grease the whole thing up to go out to the customer. Um, next thing we've obviously got to do is put the circlip back on, which is just a case of grabbing the circlip, lifting it over the top and slotting it into that little groove. Then we put the brass on, obviously recessed down. And then we're going to slide this assembly And wiggle it into the housing, which then leaves us with a recess for the main circlip, which we squeeze together and without trapping my fingers, push into the groove. Again, just use a flat bladed screwdriver. It saves you pinching your skin. Which, I can assure you, is an unpleasant experience. Now, obviously we've rebuilt this. It turns just as it did before. Still got full movement. Um, that's the grease nipple, again. So when we fill this back up with grease, it'll be ready to go. Reassembly is just the exact reverse of disassembly. So we pop that into the housing, locate the holes, pop the bolts or set screws in like that. them up, they don't need to be massively tight. Then we grab our 40 mil spanner again, uh, and if you want to put some Loctite on here, it'll help when you do the kill. Now, if you pop a dob of Loctite onto the swivel, like that, put the rotor arm carefully back on and then snip it up the forty mil spanner. left with a free spinning 14 inch wheel away um, and they're good to go.